All right, so now we're going to talk about scientific notation, uh, which you've probably learned about in your science class, but it's a good math review here when we're doing exponents. So scientific notation, as we've uh, talked about, is a convenient way to write really big or really small numbers. Uh, so we don't have to write so many digits. It gives us a better sense of how, how big it is. Um, and the general format is this. It's a number times 10 to a power. And that number out in front is always between 1 and 10, right? So it's basically a, a one-digit number, probably with some, some decimals. And this power of 10, when you take powers of 10, you're basically just multiplying by more and more tens. And so 10 times 10 is 100, times 10 again is 1,000. And so you basically just keep adding zeros. And when you multiply by a power of 10 like that, what it does is it moves the decimal point, right? Moves the decimal point. If the exponent is positive, you move it to the right. If it's negative, you move it to the left. And so when we look at our examples down here, 3.47, so notice this number is between 1 and 10, and then times 10 to the 6th. And so I'm going to take that decimal point, 10 to the 6th is a million, so I'm going to move it 1, 2, and then when you run out of digits, you just start it, uh, putting zeros at the end. So I moved it two places, and so now I'm going to have four places left to move, and so I'm going to have uh, four zeros at the end, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then I don't really need to put the decimal point, but it's sitting right there, right? Um, I don't need to put the decimal point because I don't have anything except zeros after it. It's not bad to put commas in there just to help me read it. It's 3,470,000. 3,470,000. We can when the exponent is negative, uh, it's going to tell me I'm going to move the decimal point to the left. And so I'm going to move it five places to the left. So there's one. I'm going to have to move it four more. So I'm going to have the decimal point and then one, two, three, four zeros, and then the five, one, three, four. Sometimes it's nice to put a zero in front just to make sure it's, it's easy to read that decimal point there. Um, and so I move the decimal point five places to the left. We can go the other way as well. And so remember, we just always want our number to be between one and 10. And so we typically are going to put the decimal point right in between the first and second digits here. So I'm going to have three point four, eight, seven. I don't need to write all those zeros now. And then I'm going to multiply by 10 to a power. And so now I just need to know how many times do I have to move it from here, here to get over to here. And so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. All right, so 13 places to the right. And so we'd read this as, <coughs> excuse me, 3 point <coughs> Sorry, 3.487 times 10 to the 13th is the way you read that in scientific notation. And so it sort of gives us a handle on how big it is. 10 to the 13th, much, much bigger than 10 to the 6th that we had over here. And then for the last one, again, we know we want that decimal point between the first and second non-zero numbers. So I'm going to have 6.1347 and then times 10. And since I'm going to have to move the decimal point to the left, it's going to be negative. And so now I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 places to get back there. And so times 10 to the negative 7th. Right? And that makes sense. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 zeros in there. And so those are some examples of scientific notation. A more convenient way to write numbers that are really, really small or really, really big. It's more compact. Thank you.